What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner market update. And it's not just Kenner. We've got everything, including Palatoy. We've got some Spanish figures. We've got Mint on Card. We've got loose, ungraded loose figures. So it's, it's a pretty wide assortment here. And uh, first of all, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for the continued channel support. And I want to say thank you to all of you that checked out the latest live stream that I did yesterday with Jules Burt. You can go back on my channel and check it out. It was a lot of fun. Thank you again to Jules for coming on the channel. He's got an incredible background, so I encourage everyone to go check out that live stream so you can learn more about Jules' uh, career, his collecting history, uh, his acting history. I mean, he's, he's just done so many cool things. So thank you again to Jules. Let's go ahead and dig right in. We've got a pretty wide assortment of awesome items that I've all sold here fairly recently. And we're starting off with where it all began. This is a 12 back A Luke Farm Boy AFA 80. Absolutely incredible item. And this is this had the old label on it. As you can see here, it's the AFA 80 with no subgrades. So this was graded before AFA went over to subgrades for the card, blister, and figure. But give me a break. What an incredible unpunched 12 back A Luke. And the price reflected that. It sold for $56.99 on 28 bids and it closed on October 12th. And, you know, quite honestly, I think that if it, if it had the updated grading with the three tier subscores, it, it probably would have easily gotten into the $6,000 price point because we've seen another another 12 back A loop that hit over $6,000. So I think that this price was great. And uh, I think that the grade still applies. You can see just a little bit of pink on the arms and on the uh, the, the bottom of his tunic there, uh, where the figure has started to, to just slightly degrade a little bit. So uh, that, you know, the, the arms are starting to just be a little bit pinkish, but it's still an 80 quality figure. And, uh, you know, this is an iconic item and uh, the price certainly reflected that. So congratulations to that buyer, because I think that that price, given where we've seen some of the other 12 back A Luke sell for, that was a great price. Um, another 12 back A was this one. This one was a C-3PO and it was graded AFA 85. So about as good as it gets for uh, for a 12 back A. You can see the grades there. A card got an 80. The blister and figure scores were 85. So it had the archival case. And, uh, you know, again, I think that that price was, was actually pretty good. We, there was another 12 back A uh, C-3PO that sold for $1,900 in the last few months. So $1,625 was was right in line. And I don't know if that's a sign that we're starting to see a pullback here or if it's because this one is punched versus unpunched or what, you know, once you start digging into these super high grade, super expensive items, you know, that, that, that type of collector gets very specific with what they're looking for. But, uh, 1625 took that home. I thought that was a great price as well for those of you who have the deeper pockets than I do. Um, <clears throat> now, Bounty Hunters Guild, who is a, a seller for mainly modern items, he actually sold a few loose graded vintage items. And this is one of them that he sold at auction. And it was an AFA 80 no dent in boot blue snaggle tooth. Uh, a really beautiful item. It had the older style case, but it still sold for $778 and change on free shipping with 48 bids. That closed on October 2nd. Um, whether it's the older case or newer case, it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's an amazing item. And I thought that that price was pretty good given where some of the other blue snags have been selling here recently. So 778 is, a, is another data point for those of you still looking for one. This one looked really nice. The silver on the boots was still great. The silver belt buckle was in great shape. And usually you start to see a lot of wear around the hands, but those hands looked awfully mint. So uh, congratulations to Bounty Hunters Guild on that sale and also to the buyer because I thought that was very fair for both of you guys. Um, here's another one that... Bounty Hunters Guild sold, and this price was was really surprising to me. I, I was not expecting this Hollow Cheeks AFA 85 Tuscan Raider to go as high as it did, but this is the price it sold for, $823 on 35 bids. And you can see below his eye, eye tubes there, the two cheeks, uh, you know, have like a hollowed out section on, on the cheeks. And that's, um, you know, a, a fairly desirable variant. And it gives you a data point there for those of you looking for that pretty desirable variant. It's, you know, probably with the exception maybe of the Spanish Puck version of the Sand People or Tuscan Raider. This is probably going to be your most expensive variant for the Tuscan Raider. And he was most commonly found, to my knowledge, on 65 back Return of the Jedi card backs. So, um, you know, Mint on Card 
this used to be a $600 item in high grade. Now you're probably talking $1,200 or more. And, uh, you know, for a loose gridded AFA 85, it sold for 823 with free shipping. Um, now here was one that was ungraded. I don't, I don't show these very often on my channel where we have an ungraded figure just because it's hard to show apples to apples. But this one was unique enough. It was a factory error that I thought it was kind of worth pointing out. And this one had no, uh, factory paint applied to his shin or to his knee pad. So you can see there that that knee pad is completely unpainted. Uh, it came with the, the translucent blue saber, which the seller was kind enough to show in detail there. And uh, wow, what an awesome item. Uh, anything Boba Fett is going to be big and expensive. The Boba Fett tax, as we, as we always talk about on the channel. And that one sold for $289. Now, in all fairness, this figure looked absolutely dead mint. It had that lipstick, uh, really matte red overspray that you commonly see on some of these Boba Fetts. But that the mint condition of the figure combined with that unpainted knee made this one go for big, big money. So I think that that one would easily grade an 85, uh, you know, loose graded, if not higher. And uh, to get the factory uh, error, uh, unpainted knee, knee pad there, I think that's just an added bonus to it. So $289 was the price on that one. Now, I've got three different Yodas, all loose graded, that sold here recently. Uh, this one was an AFA 80, and it had the Made in Hong Kong tag on there. And so, you know, some of these early Yodas with the orange snake, the, the robe has a Made in Hong Kong tag on there. And, uh, you know, as you can see the kind of the dark cherry eyes there. And that one sold for $118. I thought that was a great price, plus shipping. 21 bids that closed on October 9th. But it gets more crazy from there very quickly. The, two, the other two, here's the other one. This is a U90 Plus, uncirculated 90 Plus grade Yoda with a new case. Uh, this one had the lighter uh, kind of orange eyes with the orange snake. But a U90 Plus grade, that's about as good as it gets for a Yoda. And that one sold for $782. Um, just as a as a reference point, I, I, all three, or yeah, all three of my, all three of my mint on card Yodas that are all 80 grade or higher, I paid less than what this one sold for. That So that shows you the demand that we've talked about in many, many videos here for these ultra-high, loose-grade figures. And that's about as good as it gets for, for a Yoda, a U90 Plus grade. So $782 took that one home. Finally, we've got the big boy. This one was an apple-headed Spanish POC figure. So this is the early Spanish figure with kind of the apple head. I did confirm with my good buddy Dustin B., who is a subscriber and a good friend of mine. Uh, he's a Yoda expert, and he confirmed that everything looked good on it. Um, and we were both thinking it would sell in that $600 to $700 range, and it, it sold for double that. <laughs> so it sold for 908 pounds, or when converted to U.S. dollars, that sold for $1,243, which is just an insane number. Dustin has two of these, and once I showed him the sales price, the final sales price on this, he's like, that's it. I'm sending one of mine in to get graded right now with Collector Archive Services. So I think he sent that off last week. So good luck to you, Dustin, on getting your grade back. I hope it comes back uh, a nice high grade like this one does. But uh, that, that price really, really surprised me. Uh, $1,243 for an early Spanish POC Yoda. So, wow, big number. Um, another Spanish figure that this seller uh, very routinely ha has amazing Spanish figures. And this one is is yet another one that is... A very, very desirable one. This is the dark brown PVP Hoth Rebel Soldier. And this one was packed in in the UKG case with the metallic Bespin Blaster. I've got that metallic Bespin Blaster encased with my AFA graded Spanish Lando. But this is also this, this, this metallic blaster. It's got a metallic sheen to the paint. Let me see. Here it is. This, this photo will show it right here, but you can see right here that metallic sheen to that blaster. Just that blaster alone can sell for three or $400 right now. It's, it's very, very desirable to, to find that one because it was only painted that way in the Spanish PVP factory. Combined with the fact that it's with a very desirable dark brown uh, Hoth Rebel soldier and it was a UKG 85 grade, um, this price actually came in lower where, than, than where I've seen them sell. This one sold for 612 pounds or 837 US dollars. That's actually well below some of the typical prices I've seen for this figure. Um, I've seen that figure sell for $1,000 plus very regularly, both on Facebook and on eBay. So that was a great deal, whoever picked that one up. I, I, I wish I could have bid on it because it's an absolutely gorgeous example of a Spanish figure. One, one of the more desirable paint schemes 
because uh, the, the PVP figures in general were known to have kind of very unique paint schemes, and that's definitely one of them. Um, <clears throat> another very nice one was this UKG 90 grade Spanish PVP Dark Pouch Chewbacca. This one was labeled with uncracked limbs, so this was basically factory fresh, and the price reflected that. It sold for $301 or 220 pounds. Um, you know, a UKG 85, for example, you can probably pick it up for about half that price. So, uh, you know, very discerning collectors were willing to pay up for about double for the uncracked limbs and the 90 grade on that uh, Spanish PVP Chewbacca. Um, going back to mint on cards now, uh, here was one I thought that was a pretty good deal. You, you don't really know what you're going to get with, with something like this. It did have some litho uh, kind of damage there in the upper right-hand corner on the front of the card back, but this one was a 41A back Imperial Commander with the survival kit offer. Really nice example overall. I mean, very, very clean, probably an 80 grade overall. And whoever got that, got that for a steal of a price, in my opinion. That, that sold for $172 and change plus $20 shipping. So let's call it about $200. Um, I think that was a great price, whoever picked that one up for a very desirable figure. I mean, I, I, if I had to guess on the grade, it'd probably be an AFA 80 uh, for the card, maybe a 75 for, on the card at, at worst. But uh, at, and then the figure would be an 85. The blister score is probably an 80. So uh, to me, this is probably an 80 or an 80 plus overall grade item. And to get that for about 200 bucks after shipping, that's a, that's a great price. Um, this one is one that, that Chris W and I, uh, Chris obviously has been on the channel a lot. He just started up a new sales page. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, he, he's left Orange Droid Vintage Toys as a side note, Chris W., and he's formed a new one based on his YouTube channel, and it's called Five Idiots Selling Toys. So that's a new ch a new Facebook sales page, so be on the lookout for that, Five Idiots Selling Toys. But Chris and I go way back, and we were wondering what this one would sell for, and the price did not disappoint. This one was an AFA 85 41 back D Darth Vader. Uh, pretty incredible item, and, and an item that just you don't see come up very often. It was unpunched. Um, for whatever reason, Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader cards are very, very pricey right now. And t the price was twenty-seven seventy-seven on thirty-six bids plus sh uh, plus shipping. That closed on October fourteenth, which was yesterday, uh, as of, as of the filming of this. And um, that number was substantially higher than I expected. I was expecting in that fifteen hundred dollar range, but uh, you know, to get an AFA eighty-five for these Empire Strikes Back Vaders, it's just really difficult to find. So, congratulations to the to the new buyer there but man that was a that was a very very hefty price to pay for it but uh admittedly i you know this is the first empire strikes back vader that i've seen come up at auction in years on ebay i mean i just i don't remember seeing any so uh congratulations to that seller and the buyer uh here's another one i thought was actually a pretty fair price this one was a 48 back a luke skywalker in his hoff gear uh it had a price sticker and it was punched but overall it was in pretty excellent condition based on the photos, um, you know, it, it's hard to say what it would grade at, but I'm, I'm guessing an 80, had some light edge wear, things like that, but pretty good shape overall. The blister was in great shape. That one sold for $540 with free shipping on 24 bids. That one sold on September 30th. I've had this one in my watch list for a while, just haven't gotten around to talking about it with me out of town, but uh, I thought whoever picked that up got a, got a great price on that. Um, you know, AFA 80 grade or, or above, Luke Hoffs on the ESB card, uh, you're typically talking seven or eight hundred dollars or more, even approaching a thousand dollars, depending on the grade and the card back. So, pretty great price I thought for that one. Um, here's one of my collection, and uh, this price came in a little bit higher than I expected. This was an AFA 80 yellowed blister, Revenge of the Jedi sticker, 48 C back Cloud Car Pilot, and I've got, it's crazy. I got this one last year. It was a clear blister. I got it ungraded. Uh, I believe I paid two hundred and seventy five dollars for it. And it came back with straight 85s from Collector Archive Services. So it was an awesome item. I got a great deal on it. But a yellow blister AFA 80, uh, it sold for $620 on 24 bids. So I, I think that shows that, and this is something that Chris and I have talked about in past live streams, where the Cloud Car Pilot is becoming very desirable right now. Uh, part of it might just be because of, of the white figure and uh, the fact that it's hard to find these in high grade. But it seems like, Mint on card, Cloud Car Pilot figures are really jumping up in price right now. And um, uh, I'm, I'm really glad I picked up the ones I have uh, before prices even got even more crazy. Uh, here's one, another one I thought that was a very fair deal. Uh, this was a UKG 80 grade 
Imperial Dignitary. Uh, unpunched on the tri Palatoy Trilogo card back. Really fantastic condition. Uh, one I would have loved to a bid on. But these last 17 figures, I mean, this one sold for $298. That's really not that bad. I mean, that's a pretty great price given that I see the Imperial Dignitary sell for $150 to $200 very regularly, loose and ungraded. So uh, to get a mint on card graded as high as it is in an unpunched condition with really, uh, you know, the bubble, the blister and everything is in great shape. Uh, these bl blisters are, very, are known to be very fragile. But to get that for basically 300 bucks before shipping, somebody, I would assume, somebody in the UK got a great deal on that one. I thought that was a great price. Uh, two more before we wrap up. This one was an ungraded item, but it was a mint and sealed box. Uh, Return of the Jedi Ewok Combat Glitter. I, th I thought this was a great price as well. It sold for $228. But uh, the condition of the box looked pretty immaculate, probably an 80-plus grade, if I had to guess. That sold for, again, $228 plus shipping. That was a fantastic deal. Um, so congratulations to the buyer on that one. But uh, it might just be me, but it looked like there might be just a little bit of sun fading. Uh, the front looks okay, but I thought the back maybe looked like it had just a little bit of fading to the uh, to the to the green areas. So maybe I'm wrong there. It might just be the photos, but uh, nevertheless, I thought that was a great price. Finally, I wanted to show this one. This one was in pretty good shape. This one was an unpunched Star Wars Ewoks TV series low gray with a clear blister and uh, overall in pretty fantastic condition. Uh, you can see the blister there. It's nice and clear. And uh, this is one of the more expensive Ewoks figures. This one and uh, Wicket tend to be pretty expensive on this Ewoks TV series card back. But uh, that one sold for $190 plus shipping. I thought that was a great price. So as you can see uh, in this range of auctions, there were some, some that sold for eye-popping numbers that were well above my expectations. But there were also still some deals out there. So I think you just got to stay frosty out there and keep an eye out for, for deals. But uh, uh, a pretty interesting uh, smattering of items that date everything from the 12 back A's all the way to the later series Ewoks TV, TV, uh, TV series figures uh, that were towards the end of the Star Wars heyday in the 1985 uh, era. So uh, thank you again for watching and I'll be back soon.